Hey, what's up, Applied English? Welcome to day seven. Let's pray and let's get it. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you so much for this day and for this opportunity to teach my freshmen today. Um, I do pray that you are waking up our minds and our hearts to um, just the things that you want us to learn today. Um, in English class, just the things that, that you're teaching us um, regard, with regards to grammar and literature. Um, in our hearts, with regards to the things that you teach us about yourself. We pray that we can grow, uh, that we can grow closer together and closer to you today. And we do pray, God, that you're watching over um, all of us, whether we're in school or whether we're virtual. We love you, Jesus. We pray this all in your name. Amen. So two objectives in this lesson, and actually two lesson videos as well. For this first one, we're going to be um, learning our next bit of grammar, which is pronoun antecedent agreement. This is rather similar to subject verb agreement, so some of the rules carry over there. But I'll teach you through those basics as this or in this video. Uh, the other thing that we'll do in our next lesson video is to continue forward with triples. We're going to keep learning how to read and comprehend a script in drama. So right now, you're watching through the pronoun antecedent agreement notes video. Notice that there is a really small assignment right below pronoun antecedent agreement notes. So I want you to focus on grammar first today. Save trifles for afterwards. Um, technically, you can use this weekend to wrap up trifles as well. Really, the main thing I want you to prepare for with trifles is your quiz on Monday. One thing I would note about your trifles quiz is that your comprehension guide can be used on the quiz. It's an open note quiz. So paying close attention in today's uh, lesson for trifles will certainly help you out with that quiz. So you'll notice two things. Uh, notes, first of all, and then uh, practice from there. We'll look through both in this video. I'm going to try to move quickly just because I know we've got two lesson videos today. So here's our PowerPoint for pronoun antecedent agreement. One thing I would note is that our fill in the blank notes are attached here. So you can download and print them by clicking on the file or you can click view like I'll do right here. And as per usual, as you're taking notes, um, as you're kind of as you're either taking your own notes or filling in the blanks on these ones right here, um, feel free to pause this video as much as you need. If I'm uh, speaking too quickly, I'm just trying to be respectful of your time here. This is uh, an important little bit of grammar that I was hoping to get to last semester. We kind of ran out of time on. So notice that there are some blanks to fill in there. I'll define these terms and, and walk you through these blanks with our PowerPoint. Notice that there is a little practice quiz at the end there that I'll run you through as well. Again, these notes are just practice. I'm not, I'm not collecting them for a grade or anything, but they will prepare you for success um, with grammar moving forward in our course. This is a PowerPoint that I took off the internet. It's called Pronoun Agreement Till, Until You Pass Out. This comes from a grammar website called Chomp Chomp. It's kind of a weird website. Uh, they kind of have a strange sense of humor, but I do like the materials that they kick out. So the first basic rule with pronoun antecedent agreement is that every pronoun must generally agree with its antecedent in number. To define those terms, we just look at these terms in yellow at the bottom here. The antecedent in a sentence, it's usually the noun that a pronoun would replace. Um, so for example, let's say the subject of your sentence is Sarah. Sarah's a noun, it's a girl's name. We would replace that with the, pro with the subject pronoun she. If we are referring to Sarah in the objective, we would use the pronoun her. Her would be the pronoun for its antecedent, Sarah. Sarah took her dog out for a walk. Her there is referring back to the antecedent, Sarah. The rule here is the same exact one as it was for subject verb agreement. Singular pronouns take singular antecedents. Plural pronouns take plural antecedents. The same way that singular subjects take singular verbs and plural subjects take plural verbs. It's the same rule of pronouns and antecedents. They must match in number. So two examples here just to understand the singular plural split. We have this sentence that says the lizard licked its eyeball. Notice that lizard is a singular subject noun. It's the antecedent of this sentence. It's is a pronoun referring back to lizard. Notice that there's one lizard and we're using the uh, pronoun it to refer back to it. It's is, is possessive for eyeball. We'll cover some of the possession, the possession rules later on this semester as well. But it's is referring back to lizard. Notice that I'm not using the plural there right here. I wouldn't say the lizard licked their eyeball because there's only one lizard and there is plural. What if I do have plural lizards? I've got two now. The lizards, plural, plural S right there, licked their eyeballs instead of the lizards licked its eyeball, singular. So notice plural pronouns refer back to plural antecedents, singular pronouns back to singular antecedents. I know this is a really simple rule at face value. 
it does get a little bit trickier when we when we look at a couple of specific situations that we see in English. So um, once again, just understanding the difference between singular and plural pronouns. So um, the singulars, he, she, it, for the, su for the subjective, they would be the plural there. In the objective, him, her, and it, notice that it doesn't change between subject and object. Them is the plural object. His, hers, and its for the possessive, their and theirs in the possessive plural. Himself, herself, itself in the reflexive, themselves, is the reflexive plural. So know the difference between singular and plural. That is a matter of memorization, so uh, kind of quiz yourself through it if you need. Otherwise, this should just be review from what you already know. A couple of little situations that happen uh, in, in pronoun antecedent agreement. For one thing, we create a plural antecedent when you join two or more singular nouns with and. It's the same thing with subject verb agreement. Two subjects joined by and automatically become plural. So notice the new puppy and kitten have destroyed instead of has destroyed. Again, plural verb. Their plural pronoun owner's sofa. So notice it's there because it's referring to the puppy and kitten together. They are plural. What happens if you add each or every though um, between subjects joined by and? That's going to make them singular instead because the word each would be the singular subject now. Each new puppy and kitten destroys its owner's sofa. Words like each and every automatically make things singular. We'll see why in just a moment. So each and every indicates singular, it's like singular pronouns. Notice one thing right here is that no this happens no matter how many subject nouns there are. Each new puppy, kitten, rabbit, tarantula, hamster, parrot, turtle, and ferret destroys its singular owner's sofa. Now this is kind of a nasty sentence. I'm not gonna throw anything like this at you, but just notice that each automatically makes your, uh, makes your antecedent singular, which makes its pronoun singular. The reason why this happens is because there are indefinite pronouns. And we've seen these lists before for subject verb agreement. You actually have these lists in your subject verb agreement notes, but it's good to look over these again because this is where most people make their mistakes with agreement period. So uh, again, we've seen this list before, the indefinite pronouns that are always singular, even if they seem plural. Again, each, either, neither. Forms of one, anyone, everyone, no one, someone. The forms of body, anybody, everybody, nobody, somebody in the forms of thing, anything, everything, nothing, something. Notice that these are always singular, even if it's a word like everyone. I could have a sentence that starts with everyone on earth. That's billions and billions of people. However, the pronoun everyone is treated as singular and it's gonna take a singular pronoun for agreement. So I might say something like everyone on earth is, notice a singular verb there, Everyone on earth is his or her own best friend. I know it's a really weird sentence right there, and it sounds strange, but it is grammatically correct. We'll get some practice with those. So we got an example. Neither of my two brothers show much sense when they date women. Notice that when I say that sentence aloud, it might sound totally correct. Grammatically speaking, from a writing perspective, it is wrong. And that's where pronoun antecedent agreement gets annoying. Um, this is a rule that we oftentimes break in speech, but it becomes evident when we when we uh, make these errors in writing. It should say, neither of my two brothers shows, singular verb, much sense when he, singular pronoun, dates, singular verb, women. The reason why this happens is that neither is always, always, always singular. And once again, it's the same thing for any form of uh, one body or thing. Always singular, always singular verbs, always singular pronouns. There are some indefinite pronouns that can be singular or plural, depending on context. Those are all, any, none, more, most, or some. So for instance, we've got Beverly right here. All of Beverly's hair gets its, singular, color from a bottle. But all of Beverly's fingernails, plural, get their color from a bottle. Beverly's hair is singular. Beverly's fingernails are plural. So notice that all is still the subject, but it can be singular or plural, depending on its context. Collective noun rule, again, same thing as subject verb agreement. Collective nouns can cause problems, but in general, um, that we're gonna treat them as being singular. Collective nouns are groups of people, so words like team, jury, class, committee, army, family, herd, flock, words like that. Generally, if we treat them as singular, so if all members are acting in unison, we're gonna uh, give them singular verbs and pronouns. It is possible to make them plural only if all the members are acting individually or differently. We'll see an example of that in just a moment here. So notice the team, singular, celebrated its win. 
one team working together. It takes that singular pronoun its right there. The team changed into their, plural, street clothes and went home happy. It's treating each of those team members individually. This can cause some confusion. So the strategy that they'll suggest for us right here um, is just to insert another noun into the subject for clarity's sake. So the team members, plural, ran out to the field to meet their opponent. So if you absolutely know that you need to use the plural pronoun for a collective noun, just make it clear um, what your exact subject is. The geese in the flock all shook their feathers or something like that instead of the flock shook its feathers. It's just for clarity's sake. It does give us this little quick test right here. I just tried to, to run through it on my own a little bit and it was kind of buggy for me. So one thing I would recommend is that you try to work through these on your own. Um, you can see them in your notes and then it'll give you answers as you work through this through the PowerPoint right here. The last thing I wanna look at with you is your assignment for the day. And we'll actually look at a couple together there too. Um, kind of to reward those of you who are watching all the way through this video. Let's get there. So our assignment today is pronoun antecedent agreement practice. And this one's really, really small, so I just want to look at this document with you here. So notice, just like we did with subject-verb agreement, I've given you 10 sentences, and it's just a matter of selecting the correct pronoun um, that matches with its antecedent. I think I actually want to look at 2 and 3 for this one, just to reward those of you watching through right now. In order for Marco and Desmond to get the scholarships, he or they need to keep 3.5 GPAs. So our options are he or they right here. I hope you're identifying that they is the correct answer right here. There are two things that tell us that. For one, we know that the antecedent here is Marco and Desmond. It's the and rule right there. Subjects joined by and or plural. They're, it's going to take the plural pronoun they. Another little context clue is that we have this, the plural verb need right here instead of needs. That's also a clue that we need to use they instead of he. We can also do this by ear test, right? I wouldn't say in order for Marco and Desmond to get the scholarship he needs or he need to keep 3.5 GPAs just doesn't make sense. The plural they makes sense here. Let's look at number four. Anything works for Mr. Krabs as long as it is or they are free. I hope you're hearing by ear that it is sounds a lot better here. Again, the antecedent for the pronoun it right here is anything. And once again, any form of, of um, one body or thing is going to get treated as singular. So as soon as you notice a form of one body or thing, you know you're going to be taking singular pronouns later on. What I would do to answer these questions is to highlight them. Two ways to do that. Uh, select the pronoun you like, and then either you can hit the highlight button, or if you like keyboard shortcuts, it's Control-Alt-H, which will, which will highlight the word that you like as well. Again, just a little 10-pointer right here. I want to make sure that you are comfortable with identifying correct pronouns for their antecedents.